Hi, this is John V6EY with another GNU Radio simulation demonstration. What we're going to do in this video is uh, implement the ANC4 noise canceller or the MFJ1026 noise canceller. We're going to implement it digitally uh, with baseband signals in GNU Radio and show you how it works and uh, use this as a demonstration for uh, spatial interference filtering techniques, uh, which uh, require uh, a software-defined radio that has two coherent uh, receivers, dual-channel receivers, that have the same sampling rate, uh, the same uh, synchronization of the uh, ADC clock, uh, and the same local oscillator, so that you can receive two different antennas on the same frequency and then manipulate them with technique that's called beamforming or spatial filtering. Uh, so <laughs> that sounds like an awful lot, but it's actually really quite simple. And uh, what you're trying to do is to create an antiphase copy of an interference signal that you can subtract uh, from the main signal that you're trying to receive. So we'll give you a quick demonstration first, and then we'll go through this uh, this flow diagram in GNU Radio and talk about how it works. So let's fire it up and uh, take a look. Here it comes. Okay, so here we have uh, a signal that we want to listen to, which is being overwhelmed by a switch mode power supply noise. And if we turn the peak hold on, you can see that uh, there's what the signal plus noise looks like. In effect, the switch mode power supply is jamming the signal we want to listen to. And I'm going to show you what happens when we use spatial filtering. Oh, there's the signal we wanted to listen to. So there's an example of simple phase reversal or uh, anti-phase subtraction of a noise signal from a desired signal. And we're doing it in, uh, in GNU Radio. So let's turn that down and let's take a look at how it works. What we've got is we've got uh, a number of audio sources. Um, what you can do is just record some audio and save it on your computer. And what we've actually got is two uh, signals that we want to listen to that we recorded. They're both clean signals. And then two noise sources that we recorded. One was the switch mode power supply and the other was power line noise. And then we can plug these uh, audio uh, files into our GNU radio program. And <clears throat> what that does is it gives us a chance to simulate uh, the baseband signal that we'd be receiving from a software-defined radio, in this case a dual-channel radio, one that's providing a channel uh, based on the main antenna, and the other that's providing a channel based on a noise probe, which is optimized for just picking up local noise or local interference. So how that works is the WAV file for each of the signal and noise plays. Uh, they are then uh, going through various level settings, uh, but before we get into how that works, basically the main uh, channel has a combination of noise being added to the desired signal, and the noise channel has a combination of a weak a copy of the desired signal and the noise being added together into the second channel. Now, in addition to the noise from the power supplier, the power line noise, we've also mixed in some very low-level Gaussian noise because it wouldn't be perfect. There would be other noise mixed in. And what we've done with these various constants, and you can download this flow diagram and see how it works, is we've got uh, some leakage of the desired signal leaking into the noise channel. We've got the noise... Uh, being injected into the main channel, and uh, that's basically the story. So we've set up two channels, one with mostly signal, one with mostly noise, and if we do coherent processing, we can actually subtract one from the other. Now here's the subtraction and manipulation block. We've got the noise from the noise probe coming in. We can adjust its level, 
But here's the main thing, the phase shift. We're just simply multiplying uh, the IQ data by minus one. And that creates a reversed copy of the noise signal, which we then add in to the main signal. And then we can get from that uh, processed um, signal that removes the noise. And then we just feed that into a, a speaker and play it. And we've got various uh, FFTs uh, lined up to uh, take a look at both the interference and the final received signal. Uh, one other thing we're playing with is phase offset. Uh, it's very important that uh, to use this technique digitally, you need a coherent dual channel receiver. And uh, we're going to show that if the if the data coming in from the receiver is not synchronized, and we'll do that by adding a delay, that the effect of this interference reduction is, is immediately reduced. So there we are. Let's go back to the demonstration. So here we have the uh, signal minus noise. The green line is what it looks like uh, normally with the interference filter off. And then the blue line is the signal with the interference review reduced. And you can see you're getting a 20 to 30 dB or more uh, gain in signal to noise ratio. What does the noise look like? Well, in this case, we're using noise from a switch mode power supply. And I've got this FFT geared down to a uh, uh, lower part of the spectrum. So you can see the 120 hertz spikes and multiples of 120 hertz spikes all the way across. And this is typically what you'll see when you're looking at noise from a switch mode power supply. You can also see down here at the bottom, it'll come and go. But because these power supplies run at uh, 100, 200, 300 hertz, uh, you, can, you can see the extra interference being caused. But the main interference we're getting is the switching spikes from the, uh, from the switch mode power supply, which show up every 120 hertz. Okay, so there's the interference. Let's go back to the main receiver. Now I want to demonstrate what happens if the level of the noise signal is not matched properly with the level of the desired signal. You can see that as the amplitude is not matched, then you don't get the proper kind of cancellation or reversal. But even more dramatic is what if, uh, what if your receiver is not synchronized? What if it's not coherent? Let's simply add one sample of offset. Two samples of offset. You can see that the noise uh, filtering pretty well disappears if your samples aren't properly uh, synchronized. You've got to really use, the, and, and that's why we need dual channel software to find radios. We can plug noise into one radio and the main antenna into the other and then subtract uh, to, get, uh, to get a good signal. So let's change uh, to a different source. Um, we're going to select, uh, instead of signal two, we'll select signal one. Okay, and instead of the um, switch mode power supply noise, we'll switch to the power line noise. Okay, this will be the same idea, but it'll be a different fake radio station and a different noise source it'll it'll work pretty much the same way but it'll work you know obviously differently so we got it fired up here it comes so there is the uh main receiver with uh a signal really buried by power line noise we'll turn the filter on uh, first we'll capture the peaks of the uh power line noise.
So there's some uh, filtering taking place. And what does the power line noise look like? Not that different from the uh, from the switch mode power supply, except you've got uh, some additional harmonics and spikes coming and going here. This is my local uh, <coughs> power line source that started acting up again. <coughs> and uh, you can always tell when you're getting uh, switch mode power supply or power line noise, you'll see uh, those 120 hertz spikes. And that's why I reduced the width of this FFT, so you could really see that. But it works really well. Now, if you decide to download and play with this program, I'm not going to include these audio files. You can make your own, uh, but basically make a few noise and a few uh, signal files. <clears throat> and uh, with this uh, flow diagram, you can adjust the signal level. You can adjust the noise level. You can adjust how much noise uh, you are injecting into the signal. You can adjust how much of the signal leaks into the noise probe. And by the way, if your signal leaks into the noise probe, if, <coughs> if basically you're using a good antenna for both sources, you won't get anywhere near the same kind of reduction. Just doesn't work. And then you can check and see how quickly the filtering disappears if you haven't got your level set up right and if uh, your uh, uh, radio is, is not synchronized. So there's an example of spatial interference filtering techniques. It's just really simple subtraction of the noise signal from the uh, composite noise signal plus noise signal. It's just simple math. All we're doing here is actually just multiplying one of the channels by minus one. You can get much more fancier than this, but it really works. And here's how you can play around with uh, seeing what you can accomplish. And uh, this type of filtering is exactly what happens in the ANC4 and the MFJ1026. It's just we're doing it digitally in the receiver as opposed to having a box sitting outside. Uh, so there we go. An example of spatial interference filtering techniques. This is John B6EY making it up.